What should be done about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? It's bloody simple. Put me in charge and I will swiftly eradicate the rat terrorists. No, Jordan. We need to come up with a diplomatic solution. But Deviled Egg! Adversary of Logos, repugnant perverter of thought and word, enemy of basic human decency. Enough is enough. Give them hell, Netanyahu. get serious. I feel like it's possible historians are going to look back at this time in history and say that World War III has already begun. Because there's already multiple theaters happening at once with Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Hamas, Hezbollah. And I don't think Israel's going to stop. And neither is Hamas. This is generational conflict. But Israel was founded by the Rothschilds and a family like that. They don't give too much consideration for their neighbors. They, they want that whole region. And I don't think they're ever going to stop until they get it. And the enemies they're making along the way are never going to stop seeking retribution. Then in Ukraine, it's just a sunken cost fallacy where NATO has pumped so much money over there that they feel they have no choice but to keep fighting. However, these wars are also going on, I think for a deeper reason, to fulfill a prophecy. And a lot of people are starting to realize that America is controlled by a mafia. And it's not totally accurate to say it's controlled by the Jays, but it's largely controlled by a Khazarian mafia. And Israel's their little fiefdom, but almost nobody over there is in on it. And from here on out, I'm just going to refer to them as Special K because of how they view themselves. And whether you believe in prophecy or not, they can aptly be called the Synagogue of Satan. And unfortunately, the great America has become the Whore of Babylon in the Book of Revelation. And this whore does whatever the Mafia says. The Whore of Babylon was described in the Book of Revelation as a harlot riding the Scarlet Beast. The harlot who reigns over the kings of the earth. Does that not sound like United States global hegemony? But nothing lasts forever. Many of you have probably heard that the United States has sent an aircraft carrier over to back up Israel, and it's actually the largest warship in the world. I think it's quite possible we're going to be looking at a Gulf of Tonkin incident, like what got us into Vietnam, where the United States government, of course, lied and said one of our ships was destroyed by the Vietnamese, but didn't happen. Or more likely, they'll just allow the aircraft carrier to be destroyed by a drone. But notice they make sure to preface this by saying it's the largest warship in the world, which means it would be extra bad if something were to happen to it, an extra justification to join this Israeli conflict. So yeah, the mafia that runs the United States, they want this war so bad. They need it to fulfill their biblical prophecy. Remember in the last video I brought up the Red Heifer and how there's been a push in Israel to take down the Al-Aqsa Mosque because that's the site where they want to build their third temple. So we can see through mainstream reports they're trying to take over this temple. They already have their Red Heifer to sacrifice at this site. Not only that, but look at what they constructed in front of the UN, which is basically the headquarters of Special K. In 2021, the statue was temporarily placed in front of the UN, which matches the description from Revelation 13:2 excerpt. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So one of the other major doomsday prophecies is this, 1 Thessalonians 5.3 that says, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So basically says, we're going to reach a point where we think everything's safe, everything's fine, it's been fixed. And then bam, suddenly, it's an SHTF situation. And there's something about this quote that really resonates with me. I think that we are going to see this come into play. And shortly after I read this end times prophecy, I found this tweet from Donnie Darkened. I believe we will see tensions rise in the Middle East and nations until World War III will either seem inevitable or will occur. When it seems all hope is lost, Trump will return with the deal of the century, negotiating peace between nations and being seen as a savior for millions. The world needs Trump. Satan's false light champion is rising from right under the noses of modern Christians, the beast, who imitates Christ by saving the world and bringing peace to all nations. It's a brilliant deception. Just because God is using someone to bring judgment on evil does not mean they are right with God or that we should follow them. King Jehu and his war on Jezebel is a perfect biblical typology of the beast and his war on Babylon the harlot. Donald Trump is the chosen antichrist. They have been foreshadowing this for centuries. 
Like the Jews during Jesus' time, modern Christians and religious Christians will miss Jesus because they seek after earthly kings to preserve what they have here in this world. Satan doesn't need any new tricks. Humanity falls for the same old ones over and over again. Yeah, just like how they keep using these same things from Pearl Harbor to 9-11 to now this attack in Israel. And what I'm trying to say here is Special K is obsessed with this idea of prophecy to bring about their order. And Trump is a likable guy, but he just gives way too many concessions to Special K, to Israel. And these Israelis are moving heaven and earth in order to artificially orchestrate their weird little prophecy, from bioengineering a red heifer, to forcibly taking over Al-Aqsa Mosque, to publicly stating they are going to build their third temple there, to seemingly push for this war over in Israel. It's literally every single thing that's in their prophecy, they're making sure it comes about. And Donald Trump gave them Jerusalem. He's directly in bed with Netanyahu. And you can say like, oh, he's just doing this for diplomatic reasons to get them on his side so he can win the election. But he just seems too friendly with him. However, I don't have Trump derangement syndrome and I'm totally open to being wrong. And on the off chance that votes are actually counted in America, please go out and vote for Trump because it would be really entertaining if he was president and it would give me good content. But yeah, if you're still skeptical about who runs much of America, just look into the USS Liberty. I won't go into it here, but that's fascinating. And it's also worth mentioning that evangelical Christians also believe that a global war in the Middle East is what's going to lead to the second coming of Christ. But different groups have a different idea of what the nature of this second coming is gonna look like. Now, another thing to be aware of is there's a lot of rhetoric going on about the idea of Hamas coming through our southern border and committing terror attacks. Not saying that's impossible, but that could create justification to go to the Middle East. But yeah, Netanyahu is publicly advocating that the United States gets drawn into a war with Iran. And why wouldn't he? Because he was able to lie to us back before the Iraq war when he said that his Mossad agents knew 100% that Iraq had WMDs. That ended up being completely false, a lie, and there was zero repercussions. So of course he's just gonna do it again. And he's even publicly stated how easy it is to manipulate and maneuver the United States. This all makes more sense once you realize that the United States has been colonized. It's under foreign occupation. And I hope that the yeah. people in Israel are starting to realize that just because Special K pretends to be a J doesn't mean they care about Israelis. In fact, their foot soldiers Mossad probably let Hamas stroll right in. No, not true. My masters are kind to me. Now, I'm not saying there's just one mafia and they just claim to be one certain thing, but I'm still connecting the dots on how all these different groups work together and fight each other. I know the Catholics with the Jesuits are major controllers, along with high-level 33rd degree Freemasons, and they both have fought with one another. So it's one big confusing mess. So let's just end this by analyzing something that we can at least look at that's out in the open. Here's a post from the Jerusalem Post that talks about the red heifers that they plan on sacrificing at their third temple. And just notice how laid back they are when they're talking about essentially performing a ritual that brings on Armageddon and their plans to destroy an Islamic holy site. From Texas to Israel, red heifers needed for temple arrive. Five perfectly red heifers required for the ritual purification of those who have touched a dead body arrive in Israel from a ranch in Texas on Thursday. This is from 2022. As the Temple Institute continues preparations to lay the ground for the construction of the third temple in Jerusalem. But what this means is destroying the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is a really important mosque for Islamic people that's already there. And if they are to destroy that, it would spark like World War III. And they just talk about it like, oh, we just got to build this temple and sacrifice some cows, whatever. Now, the YouTube channel Static in the Attic, he does a really good job going over what this prophecy entails with the red heifers in the third temple. And he said word on the street that the red heifers from this 2022 article were going to be mature enough to be sacrificed around October 15th of 2023. And according to their prophecy, this ritual needs to take place on Mount Olive in view of the original Temple of Solomon, right here. But look, there's already a mosque constructed here, Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. So they'd have to tear this down. So anyway, hopefully this video leaves you with a lot to think about. The future is going to be extremely interesting, and this may not be the most ideal world we live in, but these are fascinating times, and I look forward to delivering you more content like this. So thanks for watching. Take care.
and I'll catch you in the next video. Also, please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video as well.